Hey everyone, it's Dustin from Electrician U, and today we're going to talk about apprentice electrician tools. So I've had a lot of questions recently, um, people that are getting into the trade that want to figure out what kind of tools they need to buy for the trade. So in this episode, we're going to talk tools, I'm not going to go crazy in depth with all the tools you could get, just this is the core. This is what every apprentice should start out with. So this is my basic setup uh, that I think that every apprentice should have. Um, first thing to start out with is you want to have a good bag. So this is the bag that I use uh, in it. Let me see if I can get the whole thing open. All right. In it, um, I've got basic stuff like uh, I always have a huge screwdriver that I get a, a massive flathead it's good for prying on things um, you have a lot of like big flathead stuff that you've got to screw open um, it's just a really handy thing to have uh, next on the list is a multi-tool um, the one that I recommend that you guys get it's a long shaft there's some that are like short shaft but this thing's cool because it's got flathead and Phillips they make a couple of different models so that you can get like a small flat, a small flathead and big flathead, or small Phillips, big Phillips. This one actually has two square bits on it. Square bits, as an electrician, uh, is a really good thing to have as well. So either model is great, but it's a six in one. I use these. I don't use actually like independent flathead and Phillips because it's just more shit that you got to carry. The other cool thing about this is that it acts as a five sixteenths nut driver and a quarter inch nut driver as well so that's one two three four five six different tools in one uh, that's why I recommend people get these instead of having to have six handles sticking out of here for six different tools um, next thing you need like doesn't matter if you're doing residential or commercial you need to have a good uh, sheetrock knife Stanley is the brand that I use. I just like the the feel and the grip of this one better than the little tiny wooden handle ones. Plus, like this is really rigid. The blade is uh, some of those like weak ones. You have a hard time like stabbing it into stuff because the the blade will bend on you. So get one that's pretty solid. Uh, a pair of clines. These are trade name we call these clines, but they're actually linemen's pliers. Um, everything that I get is Klein tools. Klein's just the shit, man. Like, if you get Greenlee or Commercial Electric, Southwire, like a lot of these off brands, uh, they haven't been in business as long as Klein has. Klein's been making stuff for a really long time, and so is Nipex. It's K N I P E X. Um, but those brands are like time tested and true. Um, another thing to get is side cutting players. Um, Again, Klein brand, but you're going to use these for like ripping staples out of stuff, for cutting wire. Um, try to keep the the actual blade good. You can tell on mine that I've welded it and I've I've cut some stuff live and I've blown. You know, this is just a crappy pair. The shitty thing is these are like 35 bucks a piece, uh, and you're going to go through them. You're going to cut a hot wire at the same time you cut a neutral, and poof, you're going to weld with it, and it's going to screw your cutting surface up. So take good care of these. Um, but they're a really good thing to have. Uh, next thing that I keep is I like these really small um, strippers. <laughs> Again, you can see that got an extra little divot there. Uh, a lot of these are just old tools that I've got that I've that I've just kept throughout the years. So a lot of them are spares. But uh, this will go from 10 gauge down to 18 gauge, and I like it because it's small and it fits right in your hand. Uh, it's not like big. So there are some other styles and brands out there. These are still Klein, same kind of thing. These actually have the added function of being able to crimp with them. And you have strippers, or not strippers, you have threaders inside of here. So you can stick bolts inside of here, thread them in, and then cut them. If you've got a bolt that's too long and you're screwing it into something and you need it to be more shallow, you can just take it out, stick it in there, 
and you've got six different sizes. These, this specific one actually doesn't have any uh, threaders, so it's kind of a pain in the butt, but um, still really handy. I use these far more often. I only use these if I'm doing something on a countertop and I need to cut screws because there's a tile backsplash or something like that. Um, but I do keep these with me. So if you notice too, like I've got this whole other bag of stuff over here. I suggest you get a bag that you wear and a bag that you keep extra stuff in um, because you're gonna need all of this stuff at pretty much every job, especially when you're just jumping in and out of some guy's truck every day. Um, next thing, I like this style. You don't have to get the uh, needle nose that have the, the different strippers in them, but I find that it's handy to have in case you dropped these or like you threw these in your, your back pocket to go up into an attic. Um, this has the threading tool as well. It's got a cutting edge, it's needle nose, and it's got a stripper, so it's like multiple tools in one. Uh, plus, I've never broken one. I mean, they're like really rigid and sturdy. So, I like these a lot. Um, these are probably like 35 bucks. These clines are probably like 45 bucks. This, I don't know, maybe 10. The multi-tool, 10. This is like 10 to 12. Um, these are probably about 10. You need to get a good multimeter. This is something as in a brand new apprentice you don't really need to spend the money on. If you just wanted to be a step ahead of the game, then cool, go for it. But this is like 100 to 125 bucks. Um, really worthwhile to have. I mean, you you can't be an electrician unless you've got a tester. Like, there's some guys that carry these little wands around and call themselves electricians. This is not a tester. This is a thing that tells you if there's power present or power not present, but it doesn't tell you anything about the circuit. This thing actually tells you whether or not you have a difference of potential between two wires, whether or not you have current on a wire, if there's continuity, you know, or if there's a break in the line, um, it tells you if there's a certain resistance on wire. I mean, the, it tells you a lot of things. So this is an actual tester. This is what electricians carry. But as an apprentice, you probably don't need one of these. If you just got an extra hundred bucks after you've bought all the rest of this stuff, dude, go get one of these for sure because you will need one before you're a journeyman or if you're like a second or third year apprentice. Everybody needs one of these though. So um, probably the most important tool to have, but as an apprentice, you're not going to know what the fuck to do with it for a few years. So uh, it's okay if you don't get one. Next thing is a square driver. So if you can tell the tip of this, let me see if I can get that on camera. Uh, where is it? Yeah, you need it against like a white background. Anyways, if you can tell, that's square. Uh, most of our like panels and uh, like nuts, or I'm not nuts, panels and screws, panel covers, devices, things like that, like they have the option of being flathead or square. And some of them are even Phillips or square, so like you'll know what I mean once you get there. But these things are pretty cheap. It's a number two. The number two is worn off of here, but a number two square. Uh, it's a really handy tool to have. It's probably like eight bucks. Um, this is a three eighths. You can't tell because I've beaten the top, <laughs> the top of it off so much. But anytime you use anchors with anything, you're gonna want a three eighths nut driver. So three eighths is a good one to have. And actually, I would just spend the time and go get like a full set of nut drivers that are all the way from like, I don't know, like uh, 9 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, half inch, 3 eighths, quarter inch, uh, 11 thirty seconds. That's probably all you're going to need. Um, you could get a three quarter, but you're done. You're not really going to use that. So those are the sizes that I'd get and make sure that you get one of them. If you can get the long shaft, there's some that are actually like this long. So if you can get the, the long shaft, then you'll even be in better shape because that just puts you further away from being inside of a panel of a live surface. But I would get a short one of these as well for any time that you're going to be um, putting an anchor into masonry. So like sometimes you have to, you have to like drill out a rock and you'll have to put an anchor inside of it and take this and beat on it and then you'll have to tighten that anchor in place so a short one of these that you can beat on every once in a while is a good thing to have uh, a set of these little itty bitty terminating screwdrivers in phillips and flathead are a really good thing to carry around i usually keep a flathead one in here i don't know why this phillips is in here i think i was doing something with led drivers recently that i needed the phillips for but i usually keep a flat in here and it's actually usually right next to that guy. 
Um, the other thing I've got on this side is a utility knife. Um, I like these little fold out ones. You can get three for like 10 bucks, but I just like them because I can whip them out. I don't know, put them back in, but I usually keep it always open inside of there. You're gonna use a utility knife um, like all the time. Actually, every one of these things you're gonna use all the time. And I would get a pouch that makes sure that you have this little uh, chain on it because then you can get uh, electrical tape. You can put it on there and then you just pop it out when you need one, pop it back in when you're done. And that way you can keep multiple kinds of tape on you and they're not taking up your slots inside your pouch. Um, next thing you're gonna use the crap out of is, uh, let me see if I can. Uh, next thing you're gonna use the crap out of is a tape measure. I would get a fat max tape measure. See how thick this thing is? If you run this out, um, let me see if I can do this right now. So I can run this thing out like super far before the tape breaks. Like right now I'm at 12 feet, 13 feet. Oh, it just broke at about 13 and a half feet. But let me get set up. But anyways, this helps you because a lot of the stuff that we do is overhead. So we're like holding tape measures over our head to try to measure things. And we need like six to eight feet without this thing, you know, breaking on us. Uh, we need it to be pretty rigid. So this Fat Max by Stanley is really good. 25 feet is more than enough. I wouldn't get a 16 footer. You could get a 30 footer if you wanted to, like they're just a little bit bigger, but 25 is what I usually use. Um, I got these at Home Depot, two for $19, which is a steal because they're usually one for 20. Um, but anyways, good brand. Another one to have, they have a magnetic tip. That's not what this is, but magnetic tip's really cool because you can go stick it to a metal stud if you're working in a commercial environment and it'll stay there, um, which helps out a lot. But I just, that's not the one that I have on me. Um, always keep a Sharpie, a marker on you because you're gonna be marking stuff constantly. You're gonna be marking pipe to cut it. You're gonna be marking on studs, where to place recessed can lights and where to put plugs and switches and just a Sharpie, like buy, buy 10 of them and just keep one in your pouch at all times. Oh yeah, here's my flat. Yeah, this style's cool too because it actually has like a swivel head on it. So you can hold this in place and like actually, you know, twist it. Um, but these Klein ones do that too. Just different brands. This is Craftsman. Um, another thing to keep on you is what we call a ticker or a sniffer or um, <laughs> a piece of shit. A lot of guys call these different things. Um, but this basically like you can go up to a wire and te test whether or not the wire is hot or not. Um, I wouldn't use this as a tester. I don't call it a tester because all it does is tell you whether or not there's uh, power present or not, but it doesn't tell you which wire in a box is hot necessarily. And if the batteries are running low, they start acting weird. There's a lot of times where these are not <clears throat> uh, super accurate, but if you have somebody standing at a panel and you're trying to identify a wire, they can turn breakers on and off and this thing will just start beep, 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 beeping at you. Um, actually. Yeah, like see, I've got this cord plugged in right now. And it lights up red. Kind of. That tells me it's hot. So that lets me know like if I'm gonna stick my hand in something that you know I need to watch out. But you always take your actual meter out after you've found something hot like that and test it. Don't just rely on these for an answer. Um, I would keep masonry bits and paddle bits. You're gonna use these a lot. These are for drilling into stone. Um, they're actually, like if you can tell the tips on them are not like a normal drill bit. They've kind of got like this spaded out portion. They're made for drilling through stone specifically. Um, paddle bits, I would get something that gets you like a quarter inch all the way up to about an inch and a quarter. Get like a full set of them for 20 bucks. You can probably get like uh, 10 to 15 bits. Uh, get it as a complete set. I just have a couple of those in here. Um, inside of this pouch, I recommend that you get, if I can get them out, get a quarter inch 
and uh, 5 16 drill nut drivers. You'll use the crap out of these, 5 16 more than anything, but it's handy to have one of each. Um, I keep a whole bunch of these, like, different uh, tips with, you know, one of them I'll keep with Phillips, another one I'll keep with Torx, or Star, whatever you call it, we call it Torx. Um, one of them with a square, like a number two square, one of them with a flat head, you know, like keep several of these around you and keep different tips in them. Right now, my Phillips actually goes in there. Um, what else? A plug tester is another really good thing, and I would make sure you get a plug tester that has the GFI button on it. Um, that way you can test GFI circuits to make sure your GFIs work, but this is something you'll use the crap out of. What else? A headlamp. Electricians work often in really dark environments, so having a surplus of flashlights around, very, very good idea. Um, but definitely use one on your head so that while you're working, you, don't, you can be hands-free and still have light in front of you. Um, this pouch, like if you want to see what's in my pouches, this is usually the one I keep staples in. This is the one I keep wire nuts and miscellaneous, like just miscellaneous connectors and straps and stuff like that. Um, if you want to be super zealous, you can get a Unibit. These are for good ones. They're like 50 to 60 bucks a piece. Uh, you could go to Harbor Freight or somewhere that has like secondhand tools, has cheaper shit. And you can get a, a, like three of them for 50 bucks. It doesn't really matter. They're going to burn out. you got to know that over time. But this is for drilling through metal. So it steps up. You drill a small hole. And that hole eventually just gets chewed out and chewed out. And it becomes a bigger hole. So um, they do break, though. This one recently broke. I bought it from Home Depot. This is Klein brand. We got about three holes into a piece of metal. And it just busted the tip right off. So I'm a little pissed about that. 50 bucks. Um, but Home Depot will take that back. And what else do I got in here? Oh, this thing's cool too. This is another six in one, but it's a stubby. So it's the exact same thing. It's got two, um, two different size Phillips, two different size uh, flatheads. It's got a quarter inch, it's got five sixteenths. Um, really handy for like if you're working on a trying to hang a fan and you're trying to get like a screw under a canopy and you just need to be in like a really tight space this is a good thing to have and I think that's it for my actual um, bag I like to get a belt that has a thick strap on it the thin straps tend to just cut into your sides a little bit more so having a thick strap you know I got this strap from Home Depot I think I just bought it extra and I had to punch some of my own holes into it because it was just too long. So I ended up cutting off the excess and then just punching two new holes in it. Um, so it's pretty sturdy. Good little, uh, good little bag. Next thing, a drill. So the drills don't really matter, you know, like what kind you get. Um, they do and they don't. There's an upper echelon of drills and it's Makita, Milwaukee, rigid dewalt that those four brands have the best like reviews they spend the most time competing building the exact same shit and marketing it with different colors <laughs> so uh doesn't really matter makita i can't tell you how many batteries i've gone through because with the makita uh the batteries don't just shut off well the newer style does um, a lot of these batteries though you'll be able to use the battery all until until it's completely dead whereas like some of the newer stuff uh, I know that Milwaukee and Rigid has it, and even the, the newer Makita stuff has it, but there's a cutoff switch. So when you're drilling through something, at a certain point, if the battery dies, it'll cut off to save the battery life. But in any event, you're still looking at like, um, you're still looking at probably like 150 bucks for a good drill, like a really good 18 volt, four or five amp hour, thick, sturdy drill. This has a hammer drill on it. I highly recommend getting that. Um, anytime you're drilling through stone, which you're going to come across a lot, or drilling into a concrete wall to try to hang some conduit or something, you have to have a hammer drill. Uh, it won't drill through otherwise. So um, this is the one that I use. It's pretty heavy duty. 
then I've got a small drill that I use as well. This is just something that like I can actually keep um, in my pouch. And I can go around and take plugs and switches apart and things like that. It's really lightweight and really small. The downside of this guy is like I'll clip this onto my pouch, usually in there. But it's so damn heavy that after a while like I, just, I end up walking crooked because it just hurts. So I don't like to keep this thing on me all the time. I keep a smaller drill. I've actually got like five or six different drills that are in my truck and like different models. I've got like impact drills and all kinds of different stuff that I keep. But these are just what I keep on me um, day to day. And then last but not least, I keep a separate bag of stuff. So uh, I have like one of these bags. You can get four of these different colors for like 10 bucks at Home Depot, but I keep all kinds of different drill bits, all my paddle bits. Um, I keep these little extenders because sometimes like your bit is not long enough, so you need to put an extension on it. But these are all different tips, spare tips, spare drill bits, you know, spare nut drivers. Like I've got all kinds of crap in here. More unibits. Um, these are really handy to have. This is like so you can attach a socket set to a drill, which is really handy when you're trying to build a service or something like that or put a rack together. Um, but that's a nice little thing to have. I already showed you this. Um, having a good set of gloves. Some guys like the fingerless gloves. I don't really like the fingerless gloves. Um, I like actual gloves. Depending on what I'm doing. If I'm, if I'm like wiring a house and I have to keep reaching into my pouch to grab staples it's nice to have fingers free because with the the glove ends like you can't feel anything so you end up dropping a lot um, so it's nice to have like fingerless gloves but you know ten dollar gloves from home depot are only going to last you like a month or two they're going to they're going to like rip up the fingers are going to rip out and stuff like that so um i would get some nicer like maybe 25 dollar gloves from uh like a supply house or something like that that has a little bit nicer gloves um, every electrician needs to have a level. You're going to put a lot of panels up and plugs in place and all kinds of stuff that you need to level things out with. Um, this you don't have to get. This is another meter that I keep. Uh, the other meter that I had, it has a little amp probe on it, but it'll only fit around wires that are small enough to fit through there to be able to check the current going through a wire. So I've got this big one that I can actually open up and put like some massive wires through there uh, plus this one like checks capacitance um, so it's just a, a little bit nicer model but I, you don't have to get like two meters you, I would get one if you're gonna get one at all this just happened to be in my bag um, like I said earlier electricians and flashlights go hand in hand so I would keep some really good flashlights uh, and keep extras of them and keep batteries around because you're always going to be in some kind of like dark place up in an attic or in a basement or in some kind of electrical room or something you know like where you need flashlights so flashlights are a great thing to keep on you um this brand nebo is pretty decent they make a bunch of different types um these are two different models but um i think this is nebo also yeah nebo makes pretty decent stuff um i keep Obviously, my char my charger for my little drill and my little batteries go in here. But this is a bag that I carry everywhere, and it keeps all of this stuff in it, and then I bring that bag also. So I can carry in both hands everything that I need into a job. Um, another thing you need to get is Allen wrenches. There's a lot of different configurations of Allen wrenches that you can use. Um, this is just an example of one. I've got like 10 different kinds and brands of these things. Um, but just get something. Like, uh, they make metric and standard as well. Like, these are all standard. Um, but they make metric ones, and they make, like, the sizes that are all smaller than this. They make sizes that are bigger than this. They make some that are T-handles that are, like, full uh, T-handles that you can use. Um, little trinkets and contraptions. This thing's pretty cool. You can stick that on a drill and get into a really tight place, and it'll actually drill with the Phillips at a 90. Um, handy little thing to have. This thing's pretty cool too. Same kind of thing. You put a drill bit in there and it's flexible. So you can put that on your drill and get into like really weird, hard to reach places. Always keep a whole bunch of extra drill bits on me because you're going to lose the tips. Not bits, I'm sorry. You're going to keep the extra tips because you're going to lose the tips. And I keep extra 
um, of all of these extensions because again like one of them you'll lose I like these ones because they actually have a slide on them like when you put this in you can pull this slide out and it keeps screws in there from falling out so that's pretty handy um, a couple of sets of channel locks you're gonna want at least two channel locks when you're doing pipe work you need to work with both hands and be able to tighten couplings and um, so two the same size is a good idea I wouldn't get the smallest ones there's there's small there's medium there's large and there's like super wicked large I would just get the like the second size not the smallest but like the second size um, I don't think that these have a I'm sure they do they probably have like some kind of size on them this says 440 channel lock 440 I don't know if that means anything I don't really pay attention to that shit I just look for the size of them but anyways that's it that's my whole uh, my whole list of everything that you should need as an apprentice um, going into this. All right, so that was my my whole uh, list of tools that I think as an apprentice you need to have. I'll put a description down below. Um, I'll like list all of these things and the brands and everything. Um, but if you have any questions or if you're a journeyman or a master and you think that I missed something that you would like your guys to have, let me know and I'll try to get this get that fitted in the uh, description down below. But uh, be safe, guys. Have a good day. And for you guys that are getting into this trade, dude, have fun with it. Have a blast. And good luck. Have a good day.